In this video, we're going to talk about how to make equations from tables. But before that, I thought it might be helpful if we actually did that in the opposite order. Make a table from an equation. Let's remember, if I have an equation like y equals 4x minus 3, and I want to create a table of values that would make that equation equal uh, be correct, then first I need to start by picking some x values. Usually we start with 0 and pick a few x values from there. In order to find the matching y-coordinate that goes with those x-values, I'm going to fill these x-values in for x into the equation and then solve for y. So if x is 0, I would say 4 times 0, notice I'm replacing x with the number in parentheses, minus 3, well, 4 times 0 is 0, minus 3 gives me negative 3. So I know my matching y-coordinate for x equals 0 is y equals negative 3. So now this creates the coordinate pair 0, negative 3. I repeat the process for each of the rest of my x-values. 4 times 1 minus 3 is 4 minus 3, or in other words, 1. 4 times 2 minus 3 is 8 minus 3, which is 5. And 4 times 3 minus 3 is 12 minus 3, which is 9. So that's the process to create a table from an equation. Today, we're going to talk about reversing that process. If I start with a table, how do I know what equation goes with it? How do I write an equation for a given table? Well, it might help first to look at the format of this equation. Uh, most of the equations that you will be working with right now are in this same format, and that's called the y equals mx plus b format. Um, all of the work that we're doing is with linear equations, and this is one of the main ways to write a linear equation. When you write these equations, the x and y, those are going to stay your variables. Those are your x and y coordinates for your tables. However, the m and the b are going to get replaced with numbers not just any number, specific numbers. Uh, the b is the y-intercept, and we've already talked a bit about that. The m is something that we haven't talked so much about, and when you're trying to create this equation from a table, uh, you're going to fill in the m with the rate of change. In these linear relationships we've been talking about, the rate of change is constant. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, the definition for rate of change is as x increases by 1, what happens to the y value? How does the y value change? So as x increases by 1 here, the y value increases by 4. As x increases by 1, again, y increases by 4. And you'll see it happens for the third time here y increases by 4. So the rate of change in this table is positive 4. Every time x increases by 1, y increases by 4, so plus 4. And you'll notice this rate of change matches the coefficient of x. Remember, that's what we call the number multiplied by a variable, is its coefficient. So the rate of change is the coefficient of x. The other part, the y-intercept. Um, that can be found across from where x equals 0 in your table. So in this case, where x equals 0, our y-intercept is negative 3. You'll notice that's the constant in the equation. Since we have a negative 3, it's minus 3. So let's take a look at doing, creating an equation from a table. Here's a table. I can see that x is increasing by 1. So now, what happens to y every time x increases by 1? You can either do some subtraction, or you can just kind of tell by looking at it. But what happens is, our y values are increasing by 7. y values don't always have to increase. Sometimes they can decrease. But in this case, our y values are increasing by 7. So our rate of change is 7 positive 7 specifically, but you can just say 7. We know that means the same thing. So when I start to write my equation, I know that 7 is the coefficient of x. I'm not done, though. I also need to remember that my constant should be the same as the y-intercept. 
So I come over here and I look, I see that where x equals 0, y is equal to a positive 12. So plus 12 is my constant. And my whole equation is y equals 7x plus 12. We can check, check, uh, excuse me, we can check that by filling in one of these x values and seeing if I get the appropriate y value out for it. I'm going to take x equals 2. 7 times 2 plus 12. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 12 is 26, where x is 2, y is 26. So that checks out. My equation looks to be correct. My next example here, we still have x's increasing by 1. So that's good. So it's pretty easy to see that the rate of change in y is an increase of 2. Since I know that, I know that my equation starts with y equals 2x. But now, I'm not so sure what my y-intercept is. My table does not include x equals 0 in it. If these numbers were closer to 0, it'd probably be pretty easy to maybe just back my table up a few spaces, reverse the pattern, and find the y value for where x equals 0. But in this case, I don't have that, and I really don't want to go backwards 22 steps. Um, so instead, we're going to do a little bit of math. I know that when x is 23, y is supposed to be 45. I need to figure out then what constant, what b value I should fill in in order to make this math work out to be true. So in other words, I'm going to solve for b so that I know what needs to go at the back of my equation here. 2 times 23 is 46. So what do I have to do to 46 in order to get it to equal 45? We'll finish getting b by itself and you'll be able to see, oh, what I have to do is subtract 1 from it. So my b is negative 1, and now I know the rest of my equation, y equals 2x minus 1. Again, I can check that by filling in a different x value. So if x was 26, 2 times 26 minus 1, that's 52 minus 1, which gives me a y value of 51, and that checks out. So my equation is correct. This time, my x values aren't increasing by 1. Luckily for us, though, it is increasing in a nice pattern. It's just a pattern of plus 6 each time. However, rate of change is what is happening to y every time x increases by 1. But it's a rate, so it means all we need to do is do some division. y is going to change how in this case? With the negatives, it may be a little bit harder to see. But think about it, from negative 5 to negative 14, my y value is decreasing by 9. Um, you can also subtract, and if you're going to subtract, make sure you do it in the correct order. Take the y value and subtract the y value above it. So negative 14 minus negative 5. But we know minus a negative becomes plus, so negative 14 plus 5. Okay, that's how we see that we have negative 9. And we'll continue to see that the y values are decreasing by 9 every time x increases by 6. But I don't want to know what happens every time x increases by 6. I want to know what happens every time x increases by 1. So I'm going to take this rate of change that they've given us. y decreases by 9 every time x increases by 6. And basically, I need to divide this out or reduce this so that I can figure out what happens every time x increases by 1, not by 6. Right? So this may be kind of an awkward proportion to solve, but luckily for us, we don't even have to do that. I can just take negative 9 over 6 and simplify that fraction, and that's going to give us the same thing. So negative 9 over 6 is negative 3 halves. That means that every time x increases by 1, my y value decreases by 3 halves, or by 1 and 1 half. It's better to leave it as an improper fraction when you write the equation, though. So we get y equals negative 3 halves x. I can see my y-intercept is a minus 5, so I know my constant is minus 5. I guess I should show that to you on the screen. And we get negative 3 halves x minus 5 as our equation. 
you can check that, fill it in, make sure the numbers all work out correctly. Another way to uh, handle some of these tables is what happens if my table is not given to me with the points in order? This table has a variety of x and y values, but there isn't any kind of order going on. The first thing we need to do is put those x and y values in order. From least to greatest for the x values. Make sure then that you take the matching y value along with it. So out of all of these x values, what is the smallest? Well, I know negatives are smaller than positives. Negative 8 is the smallest of all, and I take its matching y value with it. Then comes negative 2. Between my two positives, 5 is smaller, and then 10 is the largest. There is not exactly a pattern going on here with the x values either. From negative 8 to negative 2, that increases by 6. Between these two is an increase of 7. Between these two is an increase of 5. Over here, from 47 to 23, that is a decrease of 24. And again, subtract if you need to see how that works. 23 minus 47, y value minus the one above it. From 23 to negative 5, that is a decrease of 28. And from negative 5 to negative 25, that is a decrease of 20. Now, if you notice, we keep making these little uh, things off to the side here. Uh, we sometimes like to call these the little bug arms that are sticking out along the side of our table to show what's happening in between any two particular pairs of points. I can take any one of those opposite pairs of bug arms and find my rate of change. It doesn't look like it's going to be constant, but because this is linear, it is always going to work out to be the same thing. Now again, rate of change is what happens to y every time x goes up by 1. So I have to put the change in y over the change in x and simplify that in order to find what the rate of change is. So for this first pair, I would need to do negative 24 over positive 6. When I simplify that, that gives me negative 4. To go to my next pair of bug arms, I need negative 28 over positive 7. I see that it again simplifies to negative 4. And you can verify here in the last pair that that also simplifies to negative 4. Maybe if you could see it, you could at least. Negative 20 over positive 5 also simplifies to negative 4. So now I know my rate of change is negative 4. I know my coefficient of x is going to be negative 4. Last but not least, I need to figure out what the y-intercept is. You can solve for b like we did in example 2, or you can kind of try to think about this logically. Uh, I'm going to pick where x is 10. Where x is 10, I would do my coefficient, my rate of change, times 10, and that's negative 40. But what do I have to do to negative 40 to make it end up equaling the negative 25 that is its actual matching y value? Oh, well to go from negative 40 to negative 25, I would have to add 15. So plus 15 should be my y-intercept. I can check that by picking a different point. Negative 4 times 5. Negative 4 times 5 is 20. When I add 20 to 15, excuse me, negative 20. When I add negative 20 to 15, that equals negative 5, which is its correct y-value. So this equation is correct. It's your turn. We've got some do now problems for you. Uh, by the way, I guess I should show you, hey, these are the do now problems. And now I'm going to slide that off the screen so you can see all three of the tables. We want you to write the equation for all three of these tables. Pause the video now. All right, so let's see how you did. This has a nice rate of change in the x values going up by 1. So it's pretty easy for us to find the rate of change by finding out what's happening to y. I draw in my bug arms and I see that all of these y values are increasing by 12. So I know that I have 12x. I can see that my y-intercept is at 0, negative 5. So minus 5, minus 5 is my constant and my equation is y equals 12x minus 5. For my second table, x is increasing by 2 each time. 
So when I see that y is increasing by 3 over here, I know that 3 is not my rate of change. I need the change in y over the change in x. So I need to do 3 over 2. That is my rate of change. So y equals 3 halves x. Now I need to find what the y-intercept should be, what the constant should be. So here's the third method. Notice, because this is really close, I can kind of back my table up a step and reverse this pattern. What would I have to uh, do? Instead of adding 3, I'm going to subtract 3 to go backwards and find that across from where x equals 0, y would equal 1. For do now part c, in this table, our x values aren't in order from least to greatest, so it's going to be easiest for us to reorder these points. The smallest x value is negative 9, and we need to bring its matching y value along with it. Then comes negative 2, then 8, and then 17. Already, hopefully, you can tell that our y values are decreasing, so our rate of change is going to be negative. In fact, from 19 to 12, it decreases by 7. Over here in the x side, uh, from negative 9 to negative 2, that's an increase of 7. From 12 to 2, that's a decrease of 10. And from negative 2 to positive 8, that's an increase of 10. That's decreasing by 9, while this side is increasing by 9. And so, if I find the rate of change by doing change in y over change in x, I think you can see that in all of these, we're going to get a negative 1 as our rate of change. The numbers match, but a negative divided by a positive is going to give us a negative. Since my rate of change is negative 1, I can start by writing y equals negative 1x. But again, we need to find the constant that's going to go at the back that's going to be our y-intercept. So now let's solve for b. I need to figure out what my y-intercept value is going to have to be so that I will know the constant that goes at the back of this equation. Well, I know that if I choose this point right here, negative 1 times 8 plus my b value has to give me a final y value of 2. Basically, I filled in everything I know. I know my rate of change. I know an x and a y value. And now I just have to solve for b. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. To finish getting b by itself, I would add 8 to both sides. We see that b is equal to 10. Since it's a positive 10, I would write plus 10 here. The other way I can write this equation is y equals negative x plus 10. So before you turn off the video, uh, I want you to think back. Did you take notes on the following? These are not the only things you should have taken notes about, but make sure that you realize some of what I say does need to be included in your notes. Did you take notes about y equals mx plus b, about the definition of the rate of change, or about the formula for the rate of change, and the multiple ways that we talked about how to find the y-intercept?